The windows were stained by the touch of the rain. The old cabin, rotting in its place, stood against the cold, but barely. I was inside, shivering next to the fire while trying to warm up my frostbitten fingers. What have I gotten myself into? I asked myself as I opened my wallet and looked at the receipt I received when I rented the cabin. Huh. What a joke. They said this place was in tip-top condition and had heating. What did you just say, James? A voice asked from behind. I then answered back. Honey, I think this was a bad idea for a vacation. Like, not even the heating system works. Well, you shouldn't be the one complaining. I wanted to stay at the fancy hotel, but you said it costed too much. Now we're stuck in this scrappy cabin. I then rolled my eyes and said, Okay, we rented this cabin and there's nothing we can do about it, so please let's stop arguing. I then felt a hand touch me on the shoulder, and I turned my head while chuckling happily because I thought we finally were done arguing, but when I looked back, I didn't see Mary. I looked around to find no one there. Mary then asked, James, what are you looking for? I then rubbed my eyes and saw her. Where did you go? You're not here a minute ago, I asked while I rubbed the back of my neck. What are you talking about? I've been here the entire time. This is the warmest room in here because of the fire, and didn't you see me when you turned around? I then answered with a yawn. You know what? I must be so tired. I I'm seeing things. I better get some sleep, and I'll sleep on the couch because it's just too cold everywhere else in this dump. You can sleep on the sofa so you are closer to the fire if you want to. No, that's fine. I'd rather sleep on the bed. It's far more comfortable. Also, while you go to bed, I'm going to check with the other people staying in the other cabins nearby here to see if they are having the same problems as us, Mary stated as she walked out the door. I walked over to the window and watched her walk up to the neighbor's front porch. I then turned away and began to walk back to the couch to sleep but I saw a slightly open closet that felt like it was beckoning me to open it fully. So I walked to the closet, and there was nothing in it but a blanket. It was an old, ragged piece of cloth. It was dirty and had black blotches scattered over its surface. I then mumbled out angrily, Are you kidding me? Then I opened it up, and something rolled across the wooden floor. I then dropped the blanket while I looked for what fell. Soon my wandering eyes landed upon the decaying remnants of a human head, with long, black hair. The smell was wretched, as it caused an achy feeling in my chest. I felt disgusted and sick to my stomach by the sight of the thing. I wanted to throw up, but I held it back the best I could. I then darted out with all my strength through the door and yelled at the top of my lungs, Mary, where are you? We have to leave right now. I don't even want to tell you why. Then I heard a voice, almost like a whisper, say, So you think you can run? You can't hide from us, James. I looked all around for anyone. Then I saw Mary off in the distance. She was kneeling, and her hair dropped like spiderwebs over her lap. I ran to her and put my arm around her shoulder. While well, I said frantically, Are you okay? We have to leave right now, Mary. I'll tell you why as soon as we get on the road. I then lifted her up off her knees and stood in front of her. She still had her head down with her black hair covering her face. So then I gently lifted up her head. I beheld the same face of the rotting head that fell out of a blanket, with its sockets for eyes and flesh. Its cracked lips began to move, and it said in a mangled tone, Like I said, you can't run. I let out a grunt of pure disgust and broke out into a sprint while shoving the decaying thing away. Help me, anyone. I can't take it any more. Then two elderly people walked out of one of the nearby cabins. Their faces looked tired and annoyed by my presence. "'What's wrong? Are you okay?' they asked in a creeped-out manner. I quickly ran up to them and asked, "'Please, have you seen my wife? She walked up to your cabin only ten minutes ago asking if you had any heating problems. I don't know where she is.' I soon began to cry with hot tears streaming down my cheeks. "'I'm sorry to tell you, but no one walked up to our cabin. To think of it, we have not seen anyone else he out here but you.' After hearing this, I shouted while backing away from them, saying, "'No.' No, you're lying to me. I saw her walk up to your front door only a few minutes ago. What did you do to her? Then the man said, Here, come with us, and we'll work this out. What is your name? I was about to answer, but I saw the decaying face in their cabin window, looking at me with no emotion. The face then slowly backed away, but left me a slight smile before completely vanishing into the darkness of their cabin. Get away from me, 
I yelled while looking at the cabin. The elderly woman nearly fell to the ground by the loud outburst. Sir, I am going to call the police if you don't stop running around like a maniac out here, the elderly man said while he helped his wife back on her feet. I did not listen to what the man said. I was just too terrified to even think of it. Don't turn around, James, a voice said in a kind, evil way. It caused me to run directly ahead without looking back. I then felt a cold hand grab my ankle and it yanked me to the ground. It began to drag me across the dirt and the rocks while sticks dug into my skin. I kicked with all my might, fighting for my freedom from the thing. The voice rang in my ears again, saying, You want to live? I see. You fight to stay alive. So did your victim. But you ignored their will to live. What are you talking about? I haven't hurt anyone. I yelled while I got back onto my feet. You soon will, the voice chuckled. I stood with a firm back and looked around from where the voice was coming from. Then I looked off in the distance and saw something running at me. It was calling out my name in a deep, dead voice. Fear filled me to the brim and I ran to the old rented cabin while dodging trees that came one after the other. When I got to the porch, I saw that the wood became rotten and it nearly fell apart as I tried to get to the front door. I opened the door and swiftly turned around to lock it. I wish I had never turned around because I came face to face with the thing. It just stood there, looking at me. I slammed the door so hard it nearly broke the hinges off. I locked the door and began to run to the bedroom, but I passed the kitchen and saw a knife that laid on the counter. It glittered almost from the moonlight shining through the window. I smiled and firmly grasped the knife. As soon as I had touched it, my hand felt a shiver that went along the bone. I had a feeling that I should set the knife down. It nearly made me sick to my stomach to hold the knife. My fear of the thing stalking me then took control of my thoughts, and so I clenched my fingers tightly around the grip of the knife. You will pay for what you have done to my wife and me, I screamed out with veins bulging. The voice then laughed out. Will I pay for what I have done, or will you pay? Come on, you beast! I'll kill you! I yelled back as I ran out the front door and saw something running at me. It was yelling, James, what's wrong? Over and over again. I didn't stop to think, but immediately charged at the thing and tackled it to the ground and stabbed it over and over and over again. I showed no type of mercy. The thing kicked and cried at me to stop, but I was so scared of it, I didn't even flinch as I dug the blade in its chest. Die, you hellish demon! I screamed in a crazed tone while getting back onto my feet. Then I heard laughing from all directions. I was so confused about the situation. I thought I had killed the thing. The laughing voice then said, Remember when I said your victim would fight and plead, but you would show no mercy? Look at what you just did. My smile turned into disbelief, and then into utter pain, as when I looked down I saw the lovely face of my wife, drenched in blood. My eyes watered up, and I just felt the cries of agony and guilt fall out of me. I wrapped my arms around her tightly, never wanting to let go. I didn't want to ever think upon the thought that I had just killed my wife, but that was the only thing my mind could think about from that point on. I then remembered the feeling I had when I first grabbed the knife. I should have set it down. I softly cried to myself while I tightly snuggled my wife's body, with all the regret in the world resting upon my shoulders. I soon heard the whisper say, Now the same mercy will be shown to you.